In the Discourse on Blessings, there are two of the blessings that go together. And you see them in other lists, and the two of them go together there as well. One is having made merit in the past, and the other is directing yourself rightly. The first one, of course, is one you, over which you have no control right now. The merit in the past is showing itself in the opportunities you have right now, and that's the connection. You've got opportunities. You've got opportunities to practice, and you want to make the most of those. So the question is, where are you directing your your opportunities, the merit that gave you these opportunities required work. There's always effort in being generous, observing the precepts, meditating, developing goodwill. So you're living off the fruits of your past merit, your past work. And you don't want them to go to waste. And John Fuang had a talk, one of the few talks of his that was recorded, where he talked about using merit to make more merit. It's just this point. You've got the opportunity to practice. And even though they don't use the word gratitude for that kind of thing in Buddhism, you should have gratitude to other people. But you should be grateful in a way to yourself for having created those opportunities. And what's the best way to show that gratitude? Well, make the most of the opportunities that you now have. Direct your intention inside. And remind yourself that whatever happens in the world, the really important things that you're going to be taking with you when you leave this world are the qualities you develop in your mind. And it's not like you're just taking, taking, taking from the world and taking things away. To develop those good qualities, you have to leave something good behind, if nothing more than the good example of someone dedicated to the practice. And when you think in these terms, it pairs things down a lot. A lot of the issues that clutter up the mind. A lot of them have to do with thinking way off into the future. What's going to happen then? What's going to happen after that? But the future is very uncertain. So uncertain that a lot of your plans for the future are going to be totally useless. You do know that the best way to prepare for the future is the way you prepared for the present moment, by doing good things. That's what the principle of karma is all about. That's the part of karma that tends to not get into the heads of Westerners very easily. That your best protection is being good. There's some passages in the canon where King Vasenity comes to see the Buddha, and having a Buddha living in his kingdom got him thinking. You have the impression that before that he wasn't much of a thinker. He was just interested in power. But now that there was a Buddha down to the south of the city, every now and then he'd stop and think, hmm, what would the Buddha's perspective on my life be? And there was one time he came and said, you know those who have armies to protect them, but they misbehave in their thoughts, their words, their deeds. They leave themselves unprotected, and they really don't have any love for themselves. Now, we may not be dealing in terms of armies ourselves, but we have our ways of throwing up barriers, throwing up protections for anticipated dangers. But if your mind is out of control, those barriers are not going to protect you from much. You've got to look into your mind. So what good qualities can I develop right now? That's going to be your top priority.
and put your trust in the Buddha's teaching that if you develop good qualities, they're going to see you through. So the goodness you've done in the past has yielded this opportunity to practice right now. Have some contentment around this opportunity. It may not be perfect, but if you wait for the perfect opportunity, you'll never get any practice done. We develop our internal perfections in an imperfect world. And you look at the Buddha himself. He had to deal in an imperfect world, both prior to his awakening and afterwards, trying to set up the Dharma and the Vinaya, dealing with people. In Thai they have the term kon, which means person, but kon can also mean stir. And they often talk about how wherever you have a person, things get stirred up. Well, think of all the many persons the Buddha had to deal with. Monks, nuns, lay, women, lay men, lay women, members of other sects. They stir things up. And he's trying to, his best to set up the Dharma and the Vinaya, both for them and for the long term. So it wasn't the case that he just floated through the world three inches off the ground. And all the problems just disappeared as he appeared. He dealt with some very difficult people. There are some issues that are recorded in the canon that never get resolved. Certain monks whose misbehavior was really out of line, and there were groups of them. We don't know how the, the issues were re resolved. We do know that the Buddha tried to establish some rules to help prevent that kind of behavior in the future. So even the Buddha himself had to deal with an imperfect world. What about us? If he had waited for a perfect world, he never would have gained awakening. And it's the same with us. We've got the opportunity to practice right now. Can you breathe right now? Can you focus on your breath? Yes. Then you've got what it takes. You've got what you need. Because all the things you need to know are right here. Of all the strengths we have to develop, the, the highest one is discernment. And discernment has to do with understanding as the Buddha says, having penetrative knowledge of arising and passing away. Now, it's not just seeing things coming and going. For the knowledge to be penetrative, you have to see where they come from and what they lead to. You begin to see the varieties of things that can arise in the mind, skillful and unskillful, and you learn how to direct the mind in a skillful direction. That's what it means to direct yourself rightly. So when thoughts come up in the mind that get in the way of the practice, you have to remember, they're not the direction you want to go in. You want to go in the direction of mindfulness, concentration, discernment. Not let yourself get waylaid by petty affairs. That's when you can say that you have some real appreciation for the goodness that you've done in the past to get you to where you are now. And then you direct your attention inward to the good that you can do inside. Now that goodness will show itself outside. It's not like we're here just, just meditating. There's work to be done in the monastery. Remember, the work should not deflect you from the right direction. The direction is that you're developing perfections. And those perfections are meant to nurture good qualities in terms of your concentration and your discernment. So that even though we have to look outside, we end up bringing all that goodness back inside.
where you can generate the most good. So have some appreciation for where you are. It may not be perfect, but if it's good enough to practice, it's good enough. You often hear the question, where is the best place to practice? Well, the best place to practice is where you are right now. Because if you keep waiting for a better place, time goes past, goes past, and you begin to lose direction. For yourself to be rightly directed has to be directed right now. And what it can clear up in the mind right now. What good things it can build in the right, <coughs> build in the mind right now. That's how you show your appreciation for all the work that it took to get here. And of course, the more you focus inside right now, the more you see, and the more you see, the more you can clean things up. So this is the direction the Buddha is talking about. <clears throat>